we'll call it edge. In a way, it's, um, it's different than the cloud in that you have uh, physical devices. Uh, it could be a, maybe a camera, uh, or it could be, um, let's say, a, a, a small board, like a development board, like a, um, an IoT board. Uh, and, in, and in this case, you're training the model somewhere else, and then you take that model and you deploy it to one of these devices. Um, or, or even you could deploy it to an edge-based uh, phone, like a, maybe an Android phone, for example, or uh, maybe an iOS uh, device. Uh, so in, in, this, in this example, you know, edge-based computing uh, is really uh, the ability to take a machine learning model and do inference uh, on the device itself. And, and what, what's fascinating about this is that it can solve uh, many, many problems, like real-world problems. So what are, what are some of the problems that it can solve? Um, well, one of them is that you can do uh, uh, object recognition so potentially you could, you could look uh, I inside of a, a region at, at different people going through a crowd and, and this device could physically live uh, maybe on a, on a, a, a small location uh, and it could, it could spot uh, a particular object. So maybe it could be a piece of fruit, for, for example. Um, Another thing that can happen is that they come in small packages. And so a, a picture, you know, would be something like this, which is this um, Intel Movidius chip. And this Intel Movidius chip uh, is able to actually take uh, small pieces of, of, uh, of, of a model and deploy it in a, and associate it with something else. So let's, let's take a look at uh, another example of this. Let's, let's um, go to a computer vision um, project that I've worked with previously in GitHub. So I'm going to go to so if we look at uh, this notebook here production uh, edge machine learning let's go ahead and open this collab notebook up. So you can see in, in this diagram here we've got some uh, edge-based machine learning objects. So this is a, a deep lens. Uh, you also have a Raspberry Pi device that can do distributed machine learning uh, at the edge and also an Intel Movidia. So all of these devices can take a, a prediction model and, and then do something with that prediction model. Uh, so what are some examples of, of why you would want to do that? Well, one of the ways that you would want to do um, one of the reasons you would want to do edge-based machine learning is that you also can have low latency. And this may play a role with something like 5G is that uh, as you're able to deploy these devices everywhere, you could have distributed predictions. So you could have uh, maybe uh, self-driving cars or traffic lights that are able to automatically respond to things based on the models that they've had deployed. Also, these devices are available offline as well. So uh, because you don't have to uh, have a network connection, they can do a prediction at the edge. This is an advantage. Another one as well is that there's something called um, ASICs, is that they have application-specific integrated circuits, and those play a role uh, in driving the technology, uh, and then also uh, privacy. Uh, so who are some of the key players? A AWS, Google, Apple, Intel, uh, in, in particular, let's talk about um, two, Intel Movidius, and then iOS Core ML. Uh, so in this example, this is the workflow of how you could use something like uh, an Intel Movidius Neural Compute Stick. First, you have the model, and you push that model to a stick here. You do some development on it, maybe do predictions, uh, and then next up, you take that model, you compile it out, uh, and push it to the Movidia stick here. Uh, and then um, you can do some kind of a prototype. And so 
I personally like to, to use the Ubuntu Virtual Machine. Uh, and here's an example of, of uh, the Ubuntu Virtual Machine in action. <coughs> and then you can run some code. Uh, here's an example of it. Let's say I did, uh, you know, make run. And it goes through it. And, and you can see that I don't have the stick put inside. So uh, if I run it again, you can see that it now detected it, right? So that's that's really the first step with one of these devices is you need to plug it into a machine that has the SDK and then run it. Then once you do, you can see here, this is the actual uh, project is that I hooked it up to my camera and in real time, it can do object detection. So, I, so basically I'm able to take uh, a high powered uh, component, like in this case, this is a very high powered, uh, you know, edge-based device and, and actually deploy it um, into, a, into a machine that maybe doesn't have a, a fast uh, GPU associated with it. And this is really one of the advantages. And then I can train the model to detect new things. In this case, maybe beyond just uh, the bottle, I wanted to be able to detect uh, what type of bottle, like maybe that the, the brand of iced tea, uh, or maybe just instead of person, I also wanted to be able to detect uh, the the actual the actual person itself, right? So these these could all be different examples of, of things that that uh, you could do with the Intel Movidius stick. Uh, next up here, uh, we have the Core ML system from iOS, and iOS gives you the ability to uh, also use do edge based machine learning. A good example of that would be that I take a Core ML model here. Uh, which is their framework for, for dealing with um, machine learning. Uh, I then package it up and deploy it to an iOS application. Why would you want to do this? Well, this is optimized for, for on-device performance. So if I have a, a mobile device here, I could, I could take my model, deploy it, and then you can convert uh, any trained model from a third-party machine learning framework. Here's an example. If I do a pip install of CoreML tools, uh, I can then go and take these models here and, and then convert them into a form that the iOS device will be able to accept. Um, here's an example of how you could do this. Pip install, I could do this right in this notebook itself. And then inside, you'll see the project. Uh, here we go, ML uh, mobile net, um, convert it, and then the actual device, the model itself lives as just a file. And that file is packaged up with the source code of the project. Here's an example of the iOS uh, simulator doing uh, image classification. Here we go. The image classification uh, it shows all these different flowers at the beach. I could, if I wanted to, I could find somebody else's uh, machine learning model, swap it out, put it into this uh, directory um, and then recompile the code. So there's lots of uh, real world um, uh, practical applications of uh, machine learning that, that you get uh, by, by going through and, and building these um, edge-based devices. So really that's, that's one of the advantages of uh, edge-based uh, mach machine learning. So let's go back to uh, another section here. Uh, and I also wanted to talk about the uh, cloud native hardware. <clears throat> um, as I mentioned before, the cloud itself has many, many new components that most machine learning and data science is happening in the cloud. And so what are some examples of, of cloud-based platforms? Well, one is this concept of an ASIC. Uh, is basically a specialized chip that will do the, the machine learning, also the platform. So we, we talked about this in here. This is SageMaker, right? This is this whole platform that does uh, all of these things. Um, and also IoT. So many of these cloud platforms have IoT platforms that will accept uh, messages. Some other uh, parts of a cloud native platform could be something like a deep racer where you could take this deep racer device, program it, and then and then de deploy it um, and, and build your own self-driving car. Deep Lens, we talked about this before. This, this is a picture of uh, all the different components of this. 
uh, edge-based computer vision device. And this could be an option for, for students that want to develop uh, a computer vision project is it, one of the advantages of this, and here's a picture, is that you're able to um, take the camera, capture the stream, do some kind of processing around it, uh, and then this will trigger an IoT payload. And then from here, you can actually go through and figure out your your, your search. So you can essentially divide, develop a, a real world system very quickly uh, by using uh, a camera like this. So what are some, some resources that are available here uh, in dealing with something like deep lenses is um, you have a project itself, and this is where you would put in your project code. You have a device, and these would be the, the deep lens devices, and you have the models. And you could use a cloud-based system if you wanted to, like SageMaker, to, to train that model. Again, here's, here's a different uh, example of, of uh, doing computer vision. This is a new device. This is the SageMaker device. And you can see here that this is my bottle. This is a person, this is a table, and, and I'm able to, to in real time uh, detect that device, uh, det detect those objects. And it works by sending IoT packets. Every time it finds the correct prediction, it sends those IoT packets back to Amazon, and I'm able to see successfully uh, those things predicted. Uh, really, in a nutshell, this is one of the more important aspects of uh, computer vision is not just doing the, the research, but showing uh, a solution and, and presenting those results to other people. Uh, let's also talk a little bit about business intelligence. Um, one of the other uh, areas that the cloud uh, is actually um, excelling in is that you can build these tools that will automatically visualize uh, data. So here's a picture of uh, the sugar consumption uh, by education level uh, in the United States. And you can see that uh, that some states in the United States have very high sugar consumption um, uh, and others have uh, much lower uh, sugar consumption. And I can quickly visualize which states have issues and which states, um, you know, potentially could, could have health issues with the, how much sugar they have. And it's all by just taking this data and, and uploading it. So, so really going back to this um, picture here uh, of cloud computing is that uh, on one hand you have the cloud uh, and the cloud can, can do m many powerful things up here. Uh, uh, and and you, you can do processing like you can create dashboards uh, and you can, you can create you know, big distributed machine learning systems, but you also can grab the data and, and you can take this model and you can push it out uh, to the edge. So these are all important uh, concepts that, that we cover in classes, edge computing, cloud computing, and then also um, data science and uh, machine learning. So let me also wrap up a little bit uh, here with some concepts of, uh, you know, what, what are what are other important aspects of of learning about data science, uh, machine learning, and computer vision? So I would say that probably one of the more interesting aspects of of uh, both the education system and also uh, the job market in the U.S. Let's just talk about job market uh, in the U.S. is what I like to call is the uh, triple threat. And what this means is that the, the best scenario for, for students would be to have um, elite degree Uh, so, so let's say we go to um, a top university, uh, and then the second one would be a portfolio. And then uh, the, the other one would be some kind of certification. <clears throat> and where would the certification come from? Well, it could be from, let's say, AWS, could be one or maybe the Google Cloud Platform, or maybe Azure Cloud Platform, or maybe Databricks, 
but the the idea here is that you you your people know that you have a classification for a specific um, job skill. So you, you've you've actually been been qualified on, on that job skill. Next next step would be the portfolio. So in terms of the portfolio, this would be where you would build uh, your data science project. So this this would be where you would have a notebook. Uh, and then you would you would walk through all of the different things that that you're able to do, uh, you know, maybe maybe you would show a computer vision project, right here, and then uh, finally, why not also build a screencast, as well, and with with these projects, uh, if you're able to record, and put that on some platform, uh, video content, then then you can demonstrate. To other people that you understand, you understand how to build data science, how to build machine learning projects, and then finally you have a degree. Whatever university you know you would want to get to, maybe like a top um, fifty school. And if you're able to get these three items, uh, item one, item two, and item three, this is really uh, really the the gold standard for getting a job. Uh, in the United States, and, and the same goes for uh, potentially getting into the university system. Is is if you're able to before you start uh, have some some certifications uh, where where the university knows that you have very strong cloud skills. Uh, or another one also could be something called Kubernetes as well as an, another one is Kubernetes. Uh, this really can lead to to uh, a better outcome when you're either applying for a job or uh, applying for a university. So it's important to think about this. Uh, you know, this how 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 can I present myself so that I have uh, th these capabilities? So let's let's dive a little bit into the certification, uh, and let me show you a couple of examples here of certification uh, on AWS. Uh, let's go to AWS certification. And if you look at the AWS, which is the leader globally uh, in the cloud, they have a, a pathway where they have uh, professional level and associate level. And I think for students, uh, this is probably associate level is, is a good one. And they have these uh, architects, operations, and developer. And really, I think uh, for students in data science, if they were able to get the cloud practitioner, which is a, a really a basic level certification, and I and I actually teach this this uh, course here, I have one existing that student can take uh, cloud practitioner on Udemy, but I inside of here, this is basically the entry level certification. Um, that that prepares a student for an advanced level and, and then next either you could get a developer or a solutions architect and then once you have these level you you really have demonstrated that you you have the capabilities of building any solution on a cloud platform and then you could go on to taking a specialty so maybe a machine learning certification and or potentially a big data certification uh, so why would you want to do this? If we look uh, at the, um, the 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 salary for this <clears throat> and the job the jobs out there, we can say um, solutions architect salary. <clears throat> you can see that the this is a very easy way. Um, Solutions Architect AWS salary, uh, $140,000 is the average for a, solu a Solutions Architect. Um, and, and, and so by getting this certification, you can immediately enter into the workforce uh, and, and potentially expose yourself to, to, to different um, job opportunities that you would not get <clears throat> if you only were we're focused on just the degree. And 
this is really a strategy that is, I think, very important is how can you, you uh, enhance your abilities by not just getting the degree, uh, but also improving your chances with a portfolio and also in improving your chances with a certification. Uh, and and let's, let's talk about uh, one more item in, in, in here, which is that if you think about uh, the job process or even the university process, let's look at the job process, ap applying for a job in the United States. Um, a lot of the, the job application is like, uh, look, we can think of a, uh, maybe like a, a castle. That would be a good way to think about it. Let's use a pen here. Let's say, let's say that we have uh, a drawbridge and then we have a castle here, right? And then inside the castle, we have people that want to get into the castle, right? And, and then you have people up here that are, that are throwing things down, stopping them, right? Because this is, this is the front door of, and we'll call this a castle, that it's really difficult to just, we'll call this, this is the, the job application right, is everybody goes through the front door and it's hard to get in. But what is the way to go the back door? It, and, and, and maybe you can sneak around and you can, you can walk into the back. And, and one of the ways to do that would be to do the cloud certification. And the, and the reason here is that, is that everybody is going and they're trying to become a data scientist. Everybody wants this title, but you can be a data scientist after you get into the company uh, as maybe a cloud architect. And then from there, why not go in into the castle and then go and become one of the data scientists uh, after you've, you've got in. And, and let's say the probability here would be 90%. And then the probability here would be 10%. So why not uh, also learn a skill that will allow you to get into uh, directly into the job status uh, by by taking a shortcut. So this is called you know job strategy. So in a nutshell, these are some of the things that that I cover in courses that I teach uh, at other universities, and I also cover in the programs that that uh, we teach here. And I'll kind of wrap things up here. Really, what are the what are the important things to know about? Uh, in terms of data science and machine learning is one that Jupyter Notebook is the central hub for doing data science uh, and it can have both a science focus or an engineering focus. Also, the data science notebook workflow is ingestion, exploratory data analysis, modeling, and conclusion. And then also, uh, you know, when you think of notebooks, you should also think of them as code. And the DevOps workflow is a very good example uh, of that. Uh, and I'm, again, this is a best-selling book that I just recently wrote called Python for DevOps. Uh, and I, I talk about these concepts inside of there. Um, and finally, in terms of uh, you know, a large-scale cloud-based architecture, you can see this is a, a diagram of of what a cloud-based machine learning uh, process would look like is you ingest your, your data, which lives in a data lake, you do exploratory data analysis, maybe drop values, do histograms, uh, and then you create modeling, maybe distributed modeling, and then you create a conclusion. So really important concepts I think many students are not uh, aware of when they, when they first think about machine learning. And if you're able to study these things, you can in fact, you know, enhance your job strategy and, and instead of going directly into the castle, you can walk around and you directly get uh, the job. All right, well, thank you very much and I look forward to uh, working with you soon. Talk to you later, bye.